So now we can calculate gravitational forces. What would we do with them? Well, what we really want to do is predict the future. So we want to predict the motion of objects. So one thing we ought to be able to do is, is predict the motion of something like um, the Earth. Uh, near the sun. So what would we do to do that? Well, we'd use this, this iterative calculation method that we've talked about. OK, so here's this yellow ball, which is the sun. Here's a green ball, represents the Earth. This is a vPython program. We've told it the mass of everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this iterative procedure where we, remember, we calculate the net force on an object. And then we use this to update momentum. P future is P now plus F net delta T over some time step delta T. And then we can update its position. Its new position is going to be its current position plus average velocity, which in this case, since the force is not going to be constant, we're going to call P final over the mass times delta T. And then we'll just repeat it and see if we can predict the motion of the Earth. So here we've take, we're going to take a time step of, of a month. How long does it take the Earth to go around the sun? 12 months. OK, so there's about a twelfth of that. So here's its initial momentum in this case. It's, the Earth's orbit is nearly circular, not quite, but it's close. So here's its initial momentum. So we asked the program to calculate a gravitational force on the Earth due to the sun, just like the one we just did. And it gets a force pointing in an appropriate direction. It's attractive. That part's good. And so we calculated F net. And now we're going to calculate delta P. So delta P is the impulse, right? It's going to be F equal to the impulse, F net delta T. And so we add that to the initial momentum to get a new momentum, which is going to be that way, the sum of the current momentum and delta P. And now we're going to let the Earth move along that direction, use that momentum to get a velocity, let it move for a month. And so it moved for a month. And I don't know if you can see the green trail. Can you see the green trail? OK, that's just a trail, just a curve object. OK, now what do we need to do? We took one step. So here's a question. Um, we're going to about ready to take another step. Uh, so what do we need to recalculate before we take that next step? Um, OK, what do these things have to be recalculated? The relative position vector, the unit vector or hat, the force on the Earth by the sun, all of those things, none of those things. How much work do we have to do before we take the next step? OK, well, so 29% for 1 and 50% for 4. So. So 50 percent so, so say everything has to be recalculated. And that's right. Let's see why. We, we started out with the gravitational force. We calculated a gravitational force pointing that way, right? It was pointing in minus x direction. Is that a good force to use now in the current position? It isn't, is it? So the gravitational force 
when we recalculate it, it actually needs to point toward the star, the, the sun, doesn't it? Okay, so how, what's involved in calculating that? Well, the relative position vector was like that, and now it's like that, so we've got to recalculate it. Because if we don't recalculate it, we can't get our hat right, and we can't get the, the, mag, the direction of the force right. Now, we don't in gen it, the Earth's orbit, in fact, is close to a circle, but it's not entirely a circle, so the actual distance can vary somewhat. So we need to calculate the magnitude of R again. And so we have to recalculate the whole force to get the direction and the magnitude correct. And this is a general procedure, so we could be using it for a comet, which would have a highly elliptical orbit where the distance changes a lot. So here's our force. And so now we're going to use the momentum principle. So that's our impulse, F net delta T, because there's only this one force. And so now we get a new momentum. And from that we can get a velocity. And now we use that for another step of a month. So now we've gone two months. And we better do the whole thing again, because now the relative position vector's changed, so our hat has changed the distance. In fact, the distance actually has changed, partly because our calculation is not as fine as it could be. So here's the force. There's the impulse that's going to be F net delta T. That's going to give us delta P. We add that to the initial momentum. We've got a new momentum, and we let it go. There we are after three months, and we can just keep doing this. Four months, force, impulse, new momentum, force, impulse, new momentum, update position, force, impulse, new momentum. Well, it's not beautiful, is it? <laughs> I mean, but it's not, it, it's giving us the right, kind of behavior, the, the attraction from on the, the, the fact that the earth, is the, the earth is attracted to the sun makes its momentum curve. This is this per force perpendicular to momentum. Uh, but it's the variation in distance is way too great for, for a, um, to get a, to be a very good prediction. In fact, one wonders if it's even going to come back to the same place. Okay, we don't know. It stopped. So what would we do to make this a better calculation? Just take a smaller time step. Why would that, why would that help? Why is it more accurate? Oh, so it's, it's the issue is the position update, huh? So the Earth doesn't move as much before you recalculate the force. Is that it? So we can't, okay, so let's make the time step a hundredth of a month. What's a hundredth of a month? That's about a third of a day, huh? I don't really want to click. Well, <laughs> I told it not to, okay, that's, that looks better, doesn't it? Looks pretty circular too, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. So, so just now, we would never want to do that by hand. That would be a pain. But the computer doesn't care. So that's that's the basic scheme in doing these calculations. Uh, and of course, if we took a larger time step, so let's make it three months. So calculate the – so much bigger impulse if we use that force. We say – basically when we, the time step says we're estimating – we're approximating the force as constant during that period. So the impulse is huge, isn't it? So that's what we predict for the momentum, and now we let it travel for three months. And <laughs> not great. Not great. So one month was a lot better than three, and uh, – 
A third of a day was better. And even if we make it a tenth of a month, let's see, 0.1 months, that's probably pretty decent. Okay, so based, so so we can use this force the same way we use the spring force in that homework problem you all love so much. Um, uh, we calculate calculate the force, update the momentum, update the position. That means the force has changed, so do it again. 